Good morning. It's Wednesday, 17th of April, and I'm getting a bit of morning sunlight viewing, which is very good to set my circadian rhythm and will help sleep tonight. Uh, today, I want to talk about some new data just released, published online for the first time yesterday in Lancet, Gastroenterology and Hepatology. And this is the PANTS extension study. PANTS was originally published um, in a couple of papers a few years ago now, looking at factors that were responsible for anti-TNF drug response and non-response, and both looking at both clinical factors and genetic factors. And most pertinently, we found a genetic variant in the HLA region called HLA DQ a1 star 05, which was associated, strongly associated with immunogenicity to um, both infliximab and adalimumab. Now, the PANTS um, study ran for a year. These were patients who were starting on infliximab or adalimumab as their first biologic, their first anti TNF for Crohn's disease. It was a prospective study, um, it was not interventional, so this was not a head-to-head -head study by any means. The PANTS extension study follows patients out to three years. Not everyone took part, but there were no meaningful differences between the groups that continued and those that did not. Most importantly, at the end of three years, we see that less than a third of all patients remain on drug and in clinical remission. And quite interestingly, to me at least, that number is actually smaller in the adalimumab-treated group than it is in the infliximab-treated group. If you look at the reasons why patients discontinue drug, then there are a couple of things of interest. You see the standard things like low drug levels and high anti-drug antibodies predicting um, non-response over time. You see female sex coming out quite strongly. With the immunogenicity, you see that starting an immunomodulator early appears to be important for infliximab. So if you have a patient going on to infliximab, you want to co-treat that patient with an immunomodulator such as azathioprine, mercaptopurine, or methotrexate. Importantly, you want to make sure that the first dose of that immunomodulator is given before or at the same time as the infliximab. This has an effect on the long-term persistence of the infliximab. Importantly, with azathioprine and mercaptopurine, you also want to use a normal full dose of the drug. Those patients who in the, were in the highest quartile of dose of azathioprine or mercaptopurine did very much better in terms of drug persistence than all the other quartiles, second, third, and fourth. So start the immunomodulator early, start it at a full dose. Caveats to this, we don't yet know quite what that translates into dose of the immun immunomodulator long term, and other data have shown that you may be able to both reduce that and then withdraw it. Secondly, what does it mean for subcutaneous infliximab? Well, in that situation, I think we probably should still err on the side of going with combination therapy at the beginning, but it may be that we're able to much more successfully withdraw the thiopurine over time. So to me, the big take homes from this PANTS extension study are that the immunogenicity that is so critical for drug persistence is established very early. So you need to get in early with your immunomodulator and at a full dose, particularly for infliximab, possibly also for adalimumab. Finally, putting this into the context of the recent profile study that very clearly showed that early infliximab plus azathioprine at full dose was the most effective strategy for Crohn's disease in newly diagnosed patients treated within a couple of weeks. The PANTS data shown here today, I think, really support that. What does it mean for adalimumab monotherapy? Well, I think it means perhaps use advisedly, perhaps have a lower threshold for adalimumab plus um, azathioprine or mercaptopurine. What about ustekinumab monotherapy in a biosimilar era in Europe or rizinkizumab monotherapy, um, if that's affordable and reachable? These, I think, are all questions that we need to answer. 
Most important early on in Crohn's disease, start an effective therapy early. And Flixman plus azathioprine at full dose now has the best evidence basis for it. We still, I think, need to understand better the role of adalimab or ustekinumab monotherapy, but I think these are going to be great agents for a lot of our mild to moderate patients. That's it for today. I hope you're enjoying. We'll go back to some other topics tomorrow. Thanks for your time.